We are continuing to stay in countries where access really is a challenge, and we're moving to India. And it is my great honor to welcome Jess, Jess Stethi, to this stage. Jess, you are super active with your organization, with your foundation, helping especially children, again, fitting the discussion we've had so far about education, the kids program, what Mohammed was saying. Tell us a little bit about what is happening not only in your organization, but in general in India on World Diabetes Day and on November 14th. How is it being celebrated in such a huge country? Firstly, namaste. Uh, good evening and thank you, Bastian. Um, I'm always so, so inspired by DDoc and all the voices and I'm so happy to call myself a DDoc voice. And a very happy World Diabetes Day to everyone who is celebrating. For all of us, it is Diabetes Day every single day. But I think today marks a very special day to commemorate uh, Dr. Banting and the gift of life that he has given us and to celebrate that gift and most importantly, to advocate for that gift. And um, as you asked, I think in India today, I have seen so many of my fellow colleagues and friends uh, trying to do their bit in trying to raise the profile of diabetes in India whether that is, you know, going for diabetes runs or diabetes walks. Um, at our foundation, every Sunday, we've been having meetups and, you know, diabetes support group networks, but also um, launching a lot of resources that can help people and in keeping with the theme that everyone has talked about. And I think it's, uh, I think anyone who knows me knows how passionate I am about diabetes education. So um, launching resources and guides that can help people all over the country, whether it is urban or rural, in different languages, to really be able to internalize those messages and take care of themselves a little better. And uh, Jess, same question. What is next to educate? I, I think our viewers have understood by now that we've been cheating a little bit when putting up the agenda, that because the topic this year is access to not only diabetes care, but access to diabetes education. We have invited a number of speakers who have a specific focus on that, and you just brought it up by yourself. But what is the main thing that has been going on this year that is on your agenda in India? I can only fathom how difficult it must be to bring with your organization, but in general, a country that is so huge, so many languages, so many different sects. So there might not be one answer, I don't know. And also what's coming up for, for the year to come as your major challenges and topics in advocacy. Right. So uh, like I said, I think for the theme of this year, keeping in with IDF, education has been fundamental. Access to insulin, I think, will always be a theme. You know, no matter what the other themes are, the, the fundamental theme will always be access to life-saving medication, which we are working on constantly. Education has been a very, very prominent theme uh, for the, the past year, the years before that. And I think, again, that will stay constant for the years to come as well. And not just education for uh, the, the people living with the condition, but also education for caregivers, education for healthcare professionals as well, in terms of language and in terms of just um, how to deal with people living with the condition, how to deal with people living with the condition from varied backgrounds, varied religions, varied um, economic statuses. So that's been the theme. But I think the theme for next year, what we're really looking forward to is at least in India, I can speak very confidently about India. I don't know how it is like in the rest of the world, but people with diabetes don't know their rights. And that's a theme that we're focusing on next year. You know, whether it is right to a second opinion, right to insulin, right to research, uh, right to carry their equipments into an examination hall if they're in school, um, right to not be discriminated in a workplace. I think uh, because we're such, a, we're such a huge country, people don't know what they have the rights to, their constitutional rights. Mm -hmm. So in fact, at the end of the month, um, we are launching a list of rights for people living with the condition, but we really want to focus on that next year. And the rights that we don't currently have, which we think we should have, we want to be working on policy for that next year. And just to continue with that theme, we really want to focus on women and their rights, because as a country, we do lack a little bit of rights with women and in general, and then add on to that diabetes. And it's not a very good state for women in the country. So we want to focus on rights as a person living with a chronic condition. And then also focus on people who are women and their rights with this condition, whether it is to do with marriage, to do with 
divorce to do with just um, children. I think um, in India, we the problem that we face is people knowing their rights. They don't know it, so they can't advocate for it. So to make people aware that they have these rights, I think that's going to be the theme for next year. Thank you, Jess. And you just saw a comment from one of our other D-Dog voices here uh, saying that uh, he resonates with what you're saying about the rights-based approach uh, in, in advocacy related to not only women, but diabetes and women in diabetes specifically and in, in general. Love the fact that you're putting rights and diabetes together. By the way, we talked about Life for a Child before. They do amazing advocacy work on uh, a human rights-based approach to advocacy in diabetes. It's wonderful. I'm sure you've seen it. I'm sure you've maybe even participated in one of their workshops. Um, but I just want to bring it to the attention here of the audience. Life for a Child, the organization we've talked about in the beginning, they have an amazing toolkit out there translated in different languages about a human rights-based approach to advocacy in diabetes that is really helpful and worth uh, checking out. And they run workshops on that as well. Just amazing topic you're, you're bringing forward. And um, I like the fact that there's some comments coming in now. Everybody on Facebook who's following on Facebook right now can put in questions or comments and sometimes they find their way here. So we just saw a bit of that. Jess, what's the main thing you are doing today or you did do today? Because I think in India, World Diabetes Day is pretty much over. I don't know what time it is where you are right now, but it's coming to the end of the day now, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> so what was so, the main thing you were doing? I do see you wearing blue, which is what we all do to show solidarity for the work, uh, for the advocacy work around World Diabetes Day. What's the main thing you've been doing? So, like I said, I think every Sunday, because today is a Monday in India, at least, uh, it's become Monday, but um, every Sunday we're running meetups, we're running, we launched, a, today, in fact, we launched a diabetes starter kit that we want uh, clinicians to adopt. So we're working with clinicians all over the country that if they get a person who's recently diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, we want them to uh, give them this starter kit which has resources, which has peer support networks, which has comic books, and just make them feel like they have a buddy with them. They have a bestie with them, and they're not alone in this. So that's what we've launched today. Uh, more things coming up at the end of the month, but uh, of course, the work always stays on. Like I said, every day is Diabetes Day for us. Jess, I think that's a wonderful close to your presentation. Jess Thethi from India, from the, you said that you wanted people to have a bestie, from the Diabetes <laughs> Foundation in India. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for telling us what's happening in India and what is becoming important, especially that rights-based approach to Thank diabetes you. and diabetes care. Thank you, Jess.